Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by the University of Helsinki. My name is Simon, and I'll be your host for today's webinar titled Study European and Nordic Studies at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And during today's webinar, you will learn more about the European and Nordic Studies Master's Program and why you should cho choose the University of Helsinki as your study destination. You will learn about the courses offered, the pedagogical approach, and the multidisciplinary nature of the program. And of course, you will also hear about the much needed information on how to apply for the mentioned program. And I know for a fact that we also have a student present who will be sharing her student experience, so we will get an insight to that as well. And now without further ado, it's time to go to Minnesota actually. And I'm sending greetings to Johanna Almesloma, who is the research director and the director of the program Welcome and a good afternoon, I believe, is it? Well, thank you, Simon, for this introduction. It's very good to see you here and all, the, all of you who are following this presentation. I'm right now in, the, in Minnesota in the United States where I work as a visiting professor at the University of Minnesota, but I also work at the University of Helsinki right now, but, but this week I'll be here uh, working in a similar program uh, teaching here at, in, in the United States. Thank you so much for this presentation, Simon. Thank you very much, Johanna, for being with us. And next off, it's time to meet Lena Malki, who is the university lecturer, and I'm sending my greetings now to Finland. Yes, hello from the snowy Helsinki. We just had the first snow yesterday. I am the academic coordinator of the program, so if you start studying in our program, you will see a lot more of me. It's a pleasure having you in the session, Lena, as well. And next off, it's time to meet Carolina Koko Usitalo, the admissions advisor, I believe also joining us from Helsinki. Welcome. Thank you, Simon. And greetings from Helsinki. So I'm Carolina, and a bit later I'll be telling you more about our application process. Thank you very much. And last but not least, it's time to meet the student who will be sharing her student experience. And her name is Vitsa Protovin. Welcome, Vitsa. Hi everyone, I'm a current student of the European Studies Master's program and later after the other presenters I'm going to tell a little bit about my studying experiences here at the University of Helsinki. Thank you very much, Vita. And now that the audience has met today's presenters, a lovely panel of four, it's time to give the floor to you as I'm sure that the audience would prefer to hear more about the program, the admissions process and then more from Vita about her student experience. So I'm giving the floor now to Johanna, who will tell you more about the program. Thank you very much. Well, thank you and welcome uh, again, all of you who are following this presentation. We will be now talking about uh, Helsinki, Finland, the University of Helsinki, and of course our program in European and Nordic studies that we are offering offering in, in, the, in, our, in our university, in an, our city in Northern Europe. So in this presentation, we will talk about uh, what we do in the program, but also what kind of place Helsinki and the University of Helsinki is to study and uh, about our country, Finland, in the one of the most northern countries in the world and what kind of place that is to study and live while you are studying with us. So first, I'll say something about our country, then about our university, and then we'll go um, to the program what we do in the program, what kind of courses we offer, uh, how the students study with us, and then of course uh, how to apply and get into this program and then meet us live next year. Well, I hope we'll see uh, as many of you as possible to join us as our students. So Helsinki is a country in Northern Europe. It's a, it's a country that uh, has, has a very good educational system, and we are very proud of our kind of society, the, so, the social uh, climate there, and our uh, our uh, safety and the, and the way in which people live and the lifestyle in general. So it, it's, it's a little bit far away from some of the centers of Europe, but we actually are quite proud about our society and our country and the way in which we work and study there. We invest heavily in our education system. Uh, our government is transparent, uh, politics stable, and of course, Finland is famous for its sauna culture. You know, you will know much more about this when you come to Finland and to Helsinki. 
Finland, Finns are very highly educated, and then this is something that our higher higher education system builds on as as well. Uh, Helsinki is very close to nature. It has a very nice location by the Baltic Sea, but also you can explore the region quite easily from Helsinki as well. We are neighbors of Sweden in the west and Estonia in the south and Russia in the east. Helsinki is a very nice place to study. It, it, it ranks very high in international rankings of, of, of the quality of life and, uh, and a place to live in. And it's a, it's a very international city as well with many students, uh, not only from Finland and different parts of Finland, but also from the different parts of the world. The University of Helsinki is actually a quite an old university. It was founded in 1640. It was first located in the western part of Finland, but in the early 19th century it moved to Helsinki. It's a, it's a, it's a, very, it's a fairly large university, a multi-faculty research university that high, ranks quite high in international university rankings. We are uh, constantly in the top 100 of international uh, ranked universities, and we have been recent years uh, climbing up also in these rankings. We have 35,000 degree students, so this is a, quite a large university by European standards. 6% of our students are international, and we divide our, uh, our programs into 11 faculties that operate in four different campuses in different parts of the, of the Helsinki city. Our central campus is where this program is located, so you'll be studying right in the heart of the of the city and able to able to live there fairly close also to the to the city. So we pro provide uh, several programs in English on different levels, on the master's level, doctoral level. Uh, we have quite a few exchange students and summer schools, and also visiting students from different parts of Europe and the world. So, if you are interested in, in coming and joining us and studying with us, uh, us, us in the University of Helsinki in Finland, the things that we might be able to offer you in this, in this program really is kind of an understanding of, of Europe and its northern uh, region. So, if you're interested in questions such as populism in Europe, uh, contemporary political questions about political violence and extremism, or about European cultures, politics more generally, this program is definitely something that you would find interesting. We also uh, are, of course, keen to teach you the, the way in which Nordic societies uh, function, the Nordic way of life, Nordic uh, politics, and Nordic societies but all in a multidisciplinary setting. The teachers in this program uh, come from different disciplinary backgrounds, from different faculties, and from um, with different experience in teaching European and Nordic issues uh, in, in different settings and in different disciplinary settings. And you will be studying in, a, in an international group of students and experiencing uh, Helsinki, but also Europe uh, from, from our from our university. So now I will be handing uh, the presentation over to our academic coordinator, Lena, who will now talk more about our program and what we do in the European and Nordic Studies Masters when you come and join us as a student, uh, I hope, next autumn. So I'm now turning over to Lena to tell you more about the ideas that we have behind the program and its courses. All right. Um, well, first of all, if uh, um, if you take one thing about uh, our program with you today, I, I hope it, it will it will be that our understanding of the European studies in Helsinki has always been that uh, that Europe and European studies has never been only about the European Union. And if you think about Finland as a country who joined the European Union, Union relatively late and also a neighbor of Russia uh, between East and the West, uh, we have quite a unique perspective uh, to Europe when you look at it from, from Finland. 
and uh, in in many ways uh, even a little bit contradictory um, um, uh, relationship with with, the, with more central parts of of Europe. And we have always thought about European Union as just one aspect, uh, an important aspect, but only one aspect of what you, what Europe is about. And this is something that is maybe much, even more obvious than before nowadays. It's quite obvious by, by reading the news that uh, we need a broader understanding of what's going on in Europe in order to understand what is happening now and uh, how we can uh, move on from, from, from here. What we are seeing nowadays did not come out of the blue in, in, uh, in any way, but it's, it's strongly rooted in the history and politics and society of Europe. And this is exactly what we want uh, to introduce you to uh, during the two years that you spent in Helsinki and provide you with that kind of European studies education that doesn't become outdated anytime soon and gives you a very rich starting point to think about all kinds of issues related to European history, culture and politics from many different perspectives. As you have seen, this is not just a European studies program, but there is a, a very specific reason why we have a European and Nordic studies program. The key idea here is that, uh, that we will uh, look at Europe from a Nordic perspective and to the Nordic countries from a European perspective. And, uh, and uh, the reason why we have decided to do that is that it, I already said that Helsinki is a quite is a quite a unique place to think about Europe, and I think you will get a very different kind of perspective to Europe than you would get in 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 Brussels or 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 uh, universities in France, for example, in in more central parts of Europe. And uh, likewise, uh, when you think about the Nordic societies, uh, you get a much better understanding of the region when you place it in the in the European context. And we have very strong traditions from both of these uh, both of these approaches uh, at our university. This is also a program uh, that is the only one in the Nordic countries taught in English, where you can study the politics and history and society of the region. And uh, another reason why we have decided to have this kind of a program is that I think this provides you with a competitive advantage in the top market. You have a unique uh, profile as, as, as someone who knows uh, the European, European or has studied the European studies and you, you have your own, own specialization in the, in the Northern European region when you, when you uh, have completed your degree. Uh, now I pass back to Johanna, who will talk more about what we are particularly good at in the field of European studies and Nordic studies. Well, thank you very much, Lena, for this uh, introduction of the European Nordic Studies Studies program. Our teaching in the University of, of Helsinki is based on, on our research. We are a research and leading research university and, uh, and uh, also in our field in European and Nordic studies, we have research groups and teams that are leading teams in their own field. So everything that you will be studying with us is based on up-to-date, top-level research. And there are several units providing the teaching in this program that are all rated highly in Europe and beyond in their own field. So you will be not only getting uh, excellent teaching based on this uh, knowledge that we produce as researchers, but also supervision in your own studies and in your own research project that you'll be doing with us as part of your degree. So in the program, uh, you, we really want and we will give you a profound understanding of Europe in all of its historical, political and cultural diversity. As Lena said, we will give you a Nordic, a Nordic perspective to Europe and a European perspective uh, to the Nordic region. So, in addition to this, uh, not only you'll be learning about Europe, you'll be learning about how it's studied and researched in different disciplines. This is what we mean by the, by the multidisciplinarity in this program, because we combine different approaches from the social sciences, political science, history, area and cultural studies, 
and, and those kind of uh, dif uh, disciplines. But what, what, it, what we also will give you is flexibility and, and uh, an opportunity also to follow your own interests and, and develop your own path while you study with us by choosing the kind of courses that you are most interested in. We'll provide you core courses that all students do, but then also you have, uh, a, you can choose from a, a large number of, of courses that specialize on topics that you find most interesting. The University of Helsinki, as I said earlier, is a fairly large university with several faculties and campuses. And as a student in our program, you, you will have access to a wide range of courses organized uh, in the different faculties and the campuses in the University of, of Helsinki. So where are we particularly strong at in the University of Helsinki? We study and research intensively European politics and institutions, but not only do we study the European Union and other uh, institutions of European cooperation, we also study Nordic cooperation and Nordic institutions. We have scholars and researchers who work on questions such as diversity, multiculturalism, the way in which identities are formed and what kind of identity politics uh, is is played in different parts of Europe and in Northern Europe. Uh, we combine approaches to different institutions that utilize uh, methods in cultural studies or, or for example, uh, a theme such as politics of history and memory, which is a significant part of, of Europe, Europe today. History has played a big part in politics in many European countries and the study of memory and history politics is something that we are are very good at. But also, of course, we will we are interested in and will teach you about how Europeans cooperate and how are its states and societies connected to each other and what kind of a decision making structures there exist in Europe and how those are connected to domestic politics, political cultures, societies, democracies and how that works. So we will not only uh, be looking at the central and the key actor, which is the European Union, but also several other act actors or forms of regional cooperation in the northern uh, part of Europe, in the Baltic Sea region, all the way from, uh, from, the, from Denmark, Sweden to the Arctic, Arctic region. In addition to that, we do not understand the Nordic region or Europe as a kind of an island that doesn't have any connections to the outside world. This is a big part of our program is to teach you and to try to understand how, the, how Europe and the Europeans and the Nordic societies uh, interact with the bigger global system and the wider world. Now from here, I'll turn again to Lena to to talk a bit more in detail about the structure of our program and the kind of uh, courses that we are offering and how we organize your studies in this two-year program. So, Lena, over to you again. Thank you, Johanna. Yes, now you will see in practice what this all means in, in terms of what you will be studying. I actually switch to the next slide because it gives you a more detailed uh, picture. The key ideas in this uh, program is that it's multidisciplinary. Uh, already in the joint courses that you will do it at the beginning of your studies, you will, you will um, learn what European studies and Nordic studies uh, mean in the fields of history, in politics, uh, area studies, legal studies also a little bit. So um, that's, that's the, the idea of the joint courses that you, that, uh, you will already become introduced uh, to, to the multidisciplinary nature of European studies and what we do here. You do have, uh, you do need, need to uh, choose between two tracks, humanities track or social sciences track. That is, uh, that means that you, your degree will have uh, more of a flavor of history and area studies or social sciences, political, political science, sociology, legal studies. 
Um, so you you will choose between these, but it doesn't mean that you would not be able to do more courses on social sciences, for example, if you are in the humanities track. But there there are these two basic basic options in terms of how you specialize. What I also uh, want you to keep keep with you is that while while you see names of courses here, you also see in the in track specific studies a line called specialization studies and it means that part of your studies you can choose yourself so the degree is flexible and if you have special interests related to european or nordic studies or if you're more interested in the nordic countries or some other parts of europe you will be able to choose courses specifically uh, um, focusing on on those questions as part of your studies there are also some room for optional studies like language courses in your degree. Uh, the first year of the studies you will mostly spend doing these courses. And in the second year of studies, you, your main, uh, main thing you will be doing is the master's thesis, which is another uh, point when you can specialize on topics that you are interested in. And also maybe think about your career also, what, what might be an interesting topic to become an expert on. And you, you will not be doing the master's thesis alone. There will be a seminar, a lot of supervision, and also methods courses to support your work. And finally, you can see that there is a careers course uh, uh, as part of the degree. That's when you, when you will meet alumni of the program, people working in, in your potential future uh, future workplaces, so so you you will start building bridges to the to the real world, so to speak, and, and see see where where you could uh, become employed and 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 build those important connections as well. And as we talked earlier, we we have uh, Vita on the line as well, who is Hi. currently a second year student in our program, and I will now give give the floor to Vika to talk about her experiences of uh, studying in the program and living in Helsinki. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about my experiences. So, well, uh, I'm really happy to study at the University of Helsinki because in academic terms, I gained a lot of uh, knowledge about Europe as a very wide perspective of the continent. And I really like the fact about this uh, program that uh, it does not concentrate only very specific parts of Europe, just like the teacher said, like the Germany or the European Union. But instead, it uh, also focuses to areas like the Baltic states and, of course, the Scandinavian countries itself. So I managed to learn the history, a little bit the history, the culture and the political systems of these countries as well. And uh, apart from a great variety uh, of uh, the courses in Europe, um, I also like to mention that uh, you can learn a lot of languages. And uh, this program enabled me to develop my English knowledge very well, my Finnish knowledge. And currently, I'm also studying a third language here, which is uh, Swedish. And, um, my, uh, in my uh, study group, there are, of course, Finns and some international students. So it was actually such a pleasure to learn about their experiences as well, their culture, and like how they also perceive Finland and Helsinki. And I have to say that uh, I think Finland should be a priority choice if you want to go on a master's program because this country has an exceptional educational system in Europe, and I, I don't think that uh, there is like another one identical to this at the moment. Mm. So I'm, I would like to pass it uh, back to Johanna, who will carry on about the program. Okay. Thank you so much, Vita. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure to teach you as well, and, uh, and I'm really happy for your kind words about how you describe your experiences of being a student at the University of Helsinki and also also in Finland. So the things we, of course, want to offer you is 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 a is a springboard uh, to a career 
where you work as an analyst or an expert uh, where you need uh, not only skills in understanding European societies and Northern European societies, but also uh, skills of, of producing knowledge and analyzing data and, uh, and uh, utilizing research in your, in your future work. So we try to, and what we want to train you is to become an independent and a critical thinker who is well informed about European issues and is trained to do creative analytical projects and working in also in a multicultural English-speaking environment and a program like this will certainly help in developing all these skills. So you can think about careers in either in the organizations such as the European Union or other international institutions, national administrations, but also media, non-governmental organizations, and of course the, the business sector where, there are a lot of, uh, where there's a lot of need for an understanding of uh, Europe Northern Europe, its societies and politics. So, for example, our alumni that have graduated from these programs uh, work in places like the European Commission, the European Parliament, committee, it's com uh, the EC's Committee of Regions, or other uh, NGOs uh, uh, and educational institutions and research institutes. We are, of course, uh, giving, we will give you uh, research skills. This is a two-year program, so that means that there's a fairly heavy focus on your second year in conducting your own research and writing a research project at, at master's uh, thesis that then will be kind of the final uh, thing that you conclude in your degree with, with us. We will help you, of course, with that research, which you can ground if you want in, in our ongoing research on the study of, such as the study of boundaries, either identities, regions in Europe, different narratives of Europe, the legal traditions of Europe, or how Europe has been constructed after the Cold War, and what kind of politics have we seen in Europe, including political violence. So this, all this research infrastructure will help you in developing those analytical and research skills that we believe you will need in your uh, professional career after you have graduated as masters in, in, from the University of, of Helsinki. If you are interested in our research project, you can always explore the university website and its research database for further information about the kind of research that we do uh, in European and Nordic studies at the University of, of Helsinki. Finally, just a few words about you know who you will be dealing, with, who you will be in touch with while while you are here as a student in the University of Helsinki. Our teaching faculty comes from, of course, from different different disciplines at the University of Helsinki, but there are two particular centers that are responsible for the coordination and largely also the teaching of the program. The first one is the Network of European Studies that I'm the director of that is the main coordinator of this program. Then the second center is the Center for Nordic Studies, uh, that, I that is the, our partner in delivering the coordination of the, of the program. These both centers are multidisciplinary research uh, centers that, that provide part of the kind of intellectual uh, stimulus also to you when you are here with us and the support also when you think about your own research and study interests. Then, of course, we are a member of several international networks that uh, organize seminars, summer schools and winter schools and other activities that are aimed at our students. For example, uh, European, which is an Oxford University-based uh, international network, and as, a, as our students, you can take part in that uh, network's events and seminars and, uh, and conferences. But, of course, you have, uh, there are other uh, networks like that between us and, for example, the Nordic, other Nordic Scandinavian countries that we organize events together with our partners there. Now, of course, you've heard about uh, who we are, what we do at the University of Helsinki, what kind of a place of study it is, and what kind of program we are offering, and now I'll be handing over to our admis admissions services to Carolina to say a few words about how to apply and how to get in into our program starting next year. So I'll now turn over to Catalina. Um, but I, 
believe that before we hear from Carolina, I believe that you guys have prepared us a video, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yes. It is time to play the video for the audience. Uh, one thing I have to tell our audience members is that the volume has to be set locally on your computer. So if it's too loud or too low, you can do it with the volume tab, with the volume bar, as you see in the window. I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll be back in about two minutes. Thank you very much for preparing that informative video. And now, as indicated by Johanna, we will hear more from Carolina, who will tell you a bit more about the admissions process. Carolina, I believe the floor is yours. Thank you, Simon, and hi again. The video you just saw gave you a quite good picture of our application process, but I would like to highlight a few things and bring some additional information. Uh, so about the application process, you should really <laughs> go through the application requirements carefully. But basically, you need an appropriate bachelor's degree and English language proficiency. The language skills can be indicated with your previous school or university education or by a standardized language test. And you there are some country-specific requirements for application documents. Remember to check them through. Um, so we have an online application that opens when the application period starts December 1st. And the application period ends January 12th. The results will be available in April and studies will begin in autumn 2017. About the scholarship programs, there we have some new information about different um, scholarship categories. But for this program, the tuition fee is 13,000 euros per academic year. And citizens of non-EU or EEA countries who do not have a permanent resident status in the area are liable to these fees. And the university has four scholarship categories. Uh, the first one is the amount 
uh, of the whole tuition fee and living cost grant, which is 10,000 euros. Then B, the whole tuition fee, C, half of the amount of tuition fee, and D, the living cost grant, which was 10,000 euros. And the scholarship application will be submitted in the same online pages simultaneously with your online application. And so no extra documents are needed there. Um, well, actually, more, we have a very good website, so more detailed information about the application process, the language tests, submitting documents, scholarships, housing and living costs can be found there. So, and um, on the next slide, I think we have the addresses for you. Thank you, and I'll give back to Johanna. Thank you very much, Carolina, for this. Uh for this presentation on the application process. And now, after you have uh, uh, listened and watched this presentation, I just hope all of you have become interested in the study at the University of Helsinki, what Finland and Helsinki and our university can offer you, and what kind of a studies you would start with us in the European and Nordic Studies program. So please go and explore more in detail uh, the kind of program we are offering to you on our websites, the university websites about how, what kind of a place University of Helsinki is to study, what kind of other degrees we provide, and, and what kind of a place Helsinki is, is for students to study and live. And of course, uh, you can always contact us who uh, delivering the program and coordinating it, uh, and then also our administrative services for help and assistance in, in filling the, the forms and uh, the paperwork for your, for your uh, applications. But now I just want to thank uh, Simon, our host, and uh, Lena, Vita, and Carolina for participating in this presentation and explaining who we are and what we do and what kind of program we have and what kind of a place Helsinki and Helsinki University is for students who are interested in international English language master's degree programs. So now I'll be uh, giving uh, the, the, the word back to our host, Simon, and uh, we'll, we are now ready for any questions you may have and we'll answer them uh, in, in the coming few uh, in the, in the, within the next half an hour or so. Well, thank you very much on my behalf, and uh, we look forward to your applications and also to your questions right now that you may have, uh, that you may have about uh, what we do and the University of Helsinki. Well, thank you very much. Johanna, Lena, Carolina, and Vitsa, thank you very much for taking the time and giving this great presentation, sharing the much needed information to today's audience. And as Johanna just indicated, we are now in the questions and answers part, and for which the panel you can find on the right side called Q&A. If not, you have a button either on the top right hand side or bottom right hand side for it. And I know uh, for a matter of fact that we already have a few questions submitted. And I think it's time to pick up Frankie's. I think it's quite a specific one. And uh, perhaps Johanna, you'll be the one shedding some light on his uh, question. So the comment goes, a big problem in the EU is the difference in culture. He sincerely believes that this could be partly surpassed if the European Union would make a second language like English obligatory for all member states. What is the opinion of the Nordic states on this? Well, well, uh, I think as small European countries, uh, all the Nordic countries believe in, uh, in the importance of the local and national languages as an important part of our national identity and the way our democracy works. However, most of the Nordic countries, such as Finland, is already bilingual. So we use English in our daily life and in, in, uh, in the way we study, in the way we work, because the Nordic countries are all, all very open. So I think in terms of the kind of languages that the European Union uses, the Nordic countries are rather flexible, but I think they will all hold on to the question of the, of the importance of the national languages because that is the foundation of national identities 
in European countries, especially in the smaller European countries like the Northern European countries. Thank you very much, Johanna. I believe that Frankie will also appreciate your answer. And then moving on, the Q&A, uh, the next question is coming in from Jesper, saying that he lived in Helsinki for the last year as an intern at an institution under the Nordic Council of Ministers and truly enjoyed working as well as living in the city. And now uh, the question is, if uh, you are aware if any of your graduates have been employed, uh, for example, by the Nordic Council of Ministers? Yeah, I can answer that. Uh, we keep track of our alumni. And uh, indeed, one of, one of the first uh, graduates from the program uh, worked for a number of years um, in the Nordic Council of Ministers. She's not working there anymore, I think, or I know. <laughs> and, and I think we have had one or, or two, I think two uh, interns uh, in the Nordic Council of Ministers. Um, so definitely that is one of the, uh, well, real and potential em employers uh, of uh, students from this program. And, uh, and our, our students have also uh, uh, participated in events organized by the council and also other, other, other Nordic uh, institutions and uh, organizations in Helsinki. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, before reading the next question from Klegen, we also have a couple of questions. We more precise two questions for our today's audience members. I just opened up a poll with uh, two questions. The first one being, if you would like to get more information on some aspects of the program, that one is a comment based. Feel free to let the presenters know. And we would also like to know if you're planning to apply to this program. The options with yes, no, and maybe. And we would appreciate having your feedback. The poll itself doesn't have any time limit, so feel free to take your time. Just make sure that you do submit your questions. And there's a button for it called Submit on the bottom right-hand side of within that panel. You can still submit your questions as we are still taking on your questions. You can see that this session is interactive and do take advantage of it. Now to address Legan's question, saying that at the last time, uh, the education in Finland for non-residents uh, became, uh, well, that they need to pay for it. Uh, what about full grants? How much money uh, do they need to have to, uh, to live in Helsinki during the month? So I guess it's a twofold question. I think I could answer that. Perfect. So basically my uh, monthly budget is 700 euros that enables you to live in Helsinki like uh, because uh, I am renting an apartment but at the moment not through the housing services of the university but uh, if you come to Finland the best thing is for you to apply housing through HOA. This is the organization of the University of uh, Helsinki that helps you to find a room or an apartment and uh, basically ap apartments there cost 350 euros and then you survive basically on about 300 euros with the food. So this is my personal experience. Thank you, Vita. And then the first part of the question was, I believe it was about tuition fees, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that Finland will be introducing a tuition fees for non-EU residents yeah. the next year. Is that or am I mistaken? Yes, that's that's correct, and the and the tuition fee in this program uh, is thirteen thousand thirteen thousand euros per academic year for non-EU or EEA that is, that means the European Economic Area uh, mm -hmm. residents. Uh, because Klegen also has a question, or I believe that it's if any full grants are available, perhaps full scholarships. Yes, they are. Uh, they are uh, available uh, in this presentation. A little bit earlier, Carolina explained the different categories of scholarships. But yes, the short answer is that there are uh, full scholarships available and also partial scholarships available for those who don't don't uh, who are not awarded a full scholarship. Thank you, Johanna. And I could also tell uh, our audience members that they can navigate the presentation now that you have finished with it. So you have the buttons where it says pages 23 to the left and to the right. You can also find some information from the presentation itself now. And I do believe that the next question might be useful uh, to a broader audience as well. 
Abdul is saying that he's living in the States, in the United States, and would like to know if the course is available online. Maybe I can, I can check that. Our program uh, utilizes different kinds of uh, teaching methods, and we extensively use uh, digital learning platforms in more or less all of our instruction. We don't have, at the moment, uh, open access courses. So to enroll into this program, you will have access to our teaching. But at the moment, we are not offering, uh, for example, MOOCs, massive uh, online courses. But uh, when you are a student in the program, uh, we apply many different kinds of methods of, of studying, st uh, doing assignments, uh, and uh, also we utilize uh, online uh, course platforms. We also have partners in different parts of Europe with, with, with whom we organize online courses together you know, with several universities. Thank you very much, Johanna. Allow me to remind our audience, <clears throat> I do apologize, that there is still a poll underway. You could find it, you can find it in the polling panel, should be beneath Q&A, beneath chat. As I see that not all of you have given us your feedback, so if you guys would be so kind, it shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds up to a minute, we really would appreciate it. So thank you very much. And if you do partake in the poll, just make sure that you do submit your questions. Uh, I do apologize your answers, otherwise uh, they will be lost in the internet, so to speak. Just make sure that you do sub uh, click the submit button. Uh, we have another question about uh, eligibility coming in from Prashant. He has a bachelor's in business administration. Would that be okay in terms of eligibility? I can I can answer that. Um, uh, this is a two-year master's program with uh, with uh, quite a heavy emphasis on research, and we do expect the students to have some background uh, or prior study studies in 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 the field of history and political science or or area and culture studies. You do not have to have uh, studies in all of these fields, but at, uh, in some of these fields. Otherwise, uh, actually uh, learning what we, what we offer to you during the two-year time is, is uh, probably too difficult to follow. So um, we do not have any rule like uh, that it needs to be a degree with a specific name. Uh, in the uh, admissions procedure, we look at the exact composition of the studies to evaluate whether we think that the student has a necessary background. Usually, the business administration degrees do not have uh, enough studies in those fields that this uh, program is based on. But we, we look at these kind of matters on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you, Lena. And then the second question from Prashant is, if he holds a temporary residence permit uh, in Estonia, is he still liable to pay the tuition fee? Because he is originally from India. So yes, I can. I, so uh, you, if you have a temporary uh, residence permit, then you will have to pay the fee. So you need to have a permanent residence permit. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you. Uh, Abdul would like to know if there's, there are any short courses available online, perhaps. Not the full program, but any courses, perhaps? I, can, I think I can take that, too. Yes, I mean, our courses and the two-year program is, is basically a residential program. So you need to be physically in Helsinki, Finland, for the, for the great part of your studies. But we have a limited number of courses available. Uh, for example, now this academic year we have one course that is an online course that is delivered together with partners in different parts of Europe, and you can complete a course like that without being physically present in Helsinki. But otherwise, uh, this program is delivered on site on campus, uh, even though it utilizes a digital learning platforms, it's a residential program that uh, for the great part of, of its duration requires you to live uh, in, in Helsinki or nearby the University of Helsinki. And 
as Johanna said earlier, we do not have any courses at the moment that you could access without actually uh, being, a, uh, being a student in this program accepted to the admissions procedure. So we, we at the moment do not do any course that kind of more courses, open online courses in the field of European studies, unfortunately. Thank you, Lena and Johanna. Uh, and then I'm guessing the next question that is coming in from Klegen might be about internship uh, because he's asking about practice during studying, perhaps the practical aspect. Uh, could they do it in different companies and international organizations like the United Nations organization? Yes, definitely. I think a ma the majority of our students do an internship during their their studies, so that is possible and it happens all the time. The UN is one of the places, the European uh, Union institutions, uh, NGOs, uh, there's a wide variety of places where, where our students have uh, have done their internships. And it's also something that the university strongly supports. Good news then for Kligen. Mm, and then taking on the next question from Olga, again about the eligibility, if a degree in Bachelor's of Arts would be efficient to get enrolled in the program? Depends on what kind of Bachelor of, of Arts uh, it is. If, if, if uh, the degree includes studies in history, area and cultural studies, uh, or, or political science, social sciences, um, then um, it, it may give a good background uh, to this program. But uh, as I said, we look uh, on case-by-case -case basis, but in general, many Bachelor of, of Arts studies indeed do include studies like this, and they would be uh, a good uh, background for this program. Thank you once again, Lena. Uh, perhaps Olga can specify uh, what kind of Bachelor of Arts uh, she's holding, or perhaps uh, even uh, finishing at the moment. And while we wait for uh, the next question, I think uh, I might have a question for Vita, who can help us out, which would be, or perhaps you, Johanna, uh, which would be about the intensity of the program, how advisable, if even possible, it is to work while studying. Should I begin? Yes, please. Okay. Well, uh, personally, I believe that uh, as the courses uh, allow you to, like, you, you can basically apply uh, the courses as it fits for you. Uh, you can do that, and then you might find time to do the internship. But uh, I re what I really like in this university is that uh, our courses, like most of our courses, are uh, not uh, starting straight from the morning. So this uh, leaves us some time if uh, we would look for opportunities. And also, uh, in case of absence from any lectures, uh, we can also discuss with the teacher, is there any possibility of compensating to be uh, if somebody was absent? So I, I, I have to say that uh, it is possible to apply for an internship besides studying in the University of Helsinki, and it is a thing that it is a must to do. Thanks, Mika. I, I may just add I, I that could... com compared to uh, undergraduate programs, uh, this is a master's degree program, and there's a, a rather big ele element of uh, independent study as part of the course work and your own research. So there's a lot of flexibility in the way you organize your, your time uh, between your studies, uh, your work with uh, maybe your internships and things like that. Uh, so in real terms, many of our students uh, not only uh, work as interns, but have they already start uh, working uh, and their careers in while they're still enrolled as students. And there's certain flexibility in the program and in the way our teaching and courses are organized that allow students also to begin looking for uh, opportunities in the, in the labor market while they are at the University of Helsinki. I believe that there was, uh, Lena, uh, perhaps wanting to add something to this? 
Well, basically, Johanna said what I was going to say. Maybe I add that many of the Finnish students in the master's level in Finland uh, also work to support themselves. So uh, perhaps it's a good cultural thing to know that the university is very used to having students, especially in the master's level, who work at the same time. And uh, also, also students <laughs> tend to get employed uh, before they finish their master's thesis, um, so so we 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 are familiar with the situation and uh, we are used to it, and we can we can work it out. Really good news for any potential student then wanting to join the university and specifically this master's program. Uh, and then we have another specific question uh, coming in from Prashant, saying that uh, he has been very instrumental in academia of politics and Nordics and has also been an advisor to TICES, which is the Embassy of Finland in New Delhi in the past. And the question is, does this strengthen his chances of being admitted? Well, this is definitely something that he should mention in the motivation letter. Uh, the main admission criteria are the previous studies. But motivation letter also matters, and that is the place where, where, where the applicants can Tell you can tell uh, why you are interested in the in the European and Nordic region and what kind of previous experience also out, outside your studies you you have with this field. So we we do write uh, read the motivation letters and we do pay attention to what comes out of your background uh, from 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 the letter as well. So that's the best advice I can give. Thank you, Lena. I have a next question from Klegen, but I'm not uh, sure if I quite understand it. So perhaps uh, Johanna, Lena, or uh, any of you can help me out. So Klegen is saying that he knows that the Finland education uses the credit education system, if that's correct. It sounds as if uh, the, the question is about the European credit transfer system, which is mm -hmm. the so-called ECTS system. And if, if that is the case, then yes, certainly we are using that uh, credit system, including the grading scale that comes with it. Thank you, Johanna. I believe that was uh, the actual question. And then Olga is saying, of course, thank you for your previous reply. And she would like to specify a bit. Uh, she had the Bachelor's of uh, Arts, if you remember. And now mm -hmm. she's saying that she's studying political anthropology, uh, but uh, some universities require a deeper research-oriented bachelor's degree rather than just bachelor's of arts to get enrolled in the master's program. And her previous question was actually uh, about eligibility. We do not have any specific requirement uh, regarding what kind of a bachelor's degree. For example, that the bachelor's degree would need to have uh, uh, include a bachelor's thesis. If if you have uh, already completed a bachelor's thesis, you will find that helpful. And uh, we also have the experience that if the student has no experience and, uh, in doing research and uh, no methods training, it might be hard to follow this program. But there is no th this may weigh in when we think of uh, or evaluate the suitability of previous studies, but there is no definite rule uh, to say that your, your, your degree would not be uh, suitable for this program. Thank you, Lena. Uh, Klingen, I'm not quite sure what you mean. What is the difference of fresh specialists? Perhaps again, Johanna, if you could help me out, or we can ask Klingen to specify a bit more in detail. And perhaps, yes, Johanna? Yes, I, I spoke about, so is this about the part on careers that I was speaking about. I was speaking about the, the skills that we provide our students to work in expert pro uh, positions or researchers, analysts, uh, in, in, in positions where, where people process uh, knowledge in, as part of their, and information as part of their work. So that was probably what I was trying to say about the careers and what does a two-year master's uh, prepare the students for? Perhaps we can wait for Klegen's response, but thank you very much, Johanna, for helping me out. 
And then Peter is asking if the citizens of the Scandinavian nations potentially admitted in autumn of 2017 or after are required to pay the tuition fee for the program. The Scandinavian countries are in the EU or, or in the EEA area, so they, are, they, are, they, they do not have to pay uh, the fees. Thank you, Johanna. I believe that uh, Peter joined us a bit later. I hope you don't mind if uh, we want to take care of each and every query from each student. Of course. Uh, just allow me to see on the progress of the polling, as this was the last question submitted in the Q&A. And if that is the case, if there are no further questions, then we will be wrapping up the session shortly. But to give you a bit more time, because some of you might be in the progress of actually typing in your question in the Q&A, allow me to check actually on the progress of the poll. Uh -huh, one of you is actually still in the progress. Just make sure to submit your questions in order to make them final. And a few of you have not yet started it. I know for a fact that mobile users don't have the privilege, but perhaps if any of you are uh, joining us from a mobile phone or from a tablet, perhaps you could let us know through chat. I do apologize. If uh, you would like to get more information on some aspects of the program, or if you're planning to apply, yes, no, maybe are the possible answers to the second question. Now let's see if there was something through chat that I have missed. No, it seems that we have addressed uh, every question. I hope mm -hmm. just something came in through chat. Uh, a good question, I believe, from Prashant. Uh, when are the scholarship results declared? Okay, I'll take that one. The scholarship results are, are uh, or you will know them at the same time as you know. Uh, sorry. <laughs> So you will uh, get the results at the same time that you uh, will get the results about the admission. Thank you very much, Carolina. And on that note, it is time to wrap up the session. Firstly, allow me to thank audience members today. Uh, I hope that this session was useful. And on behalf of the University of Helsinki, I sure hope that some of you are already considering in applying to the program. And of course, it's time to thank our today's presenters for taking the time and of course sharing your expertise on this matter. Uh, perhaps any closing comments from your end before we say goodbye? Well, thank you all again for your attention and the questions and all the other uh, presenters for your, for your help in, in making this webinar happening. And thank you to you, Simon, also for hosting this. And thank you for all, all who have participated, and I look forward to seeing you in Helsinki. And I think one of the best parts of my, my uh, work is that I get to meet all, all, all of you from different parts of the world, and it has also enriched my understanding of, of Europe and uh, also, also other parts of the world and how they view Europe, and I, I hope to learn from you in the future as well. Carolina or Vitsa, perhaps anything from your end? Yes, yes uh, I would like to thank you all too. And oh, Carolina, I apologize, but I see that you have your microphone up. Oh, sorry, sorry, no because problem. I've got no a problem. bit of flu, so <laughs> I was just coughing a bit. Sorry. So thank you for all your questions, and if you have some more questions, please contact us. Thank you very much. And I would like to say thank you for my lecturers that you invited me to join this conversation today. So thank you to all of today's participants, to the panelists, as well as to the attendees. And this is Simon wishing you a good morning, perhaps a good afternoon, or a good evening from wherever you may be. Thank you for joining, and goodbye. <laughs>